Hi, it's Linda with CreativePLR.com. So we're back to wall art, but this time it's Halloween wall art. And so you can see that I've already placed some uh, clip art. I've kind of been playing with it. At first I had this, um, this like little sign there, a little frame. I thought that would be cute. I had a, a couple of tombstones that I was going to put in there. You know, I had these. And I'm like, it was getting a little cluttered. And with this here, um, it makes a cute, if you're just going to use the scene, it makes a cute um, scene and a little sign there. But I couldn't add any words. And I could have put Happy Halloween there, but then that would have looked odd because Halloween is already in the sign. So I decided to move this over. And that's what I usually do. I usually keep everything on the side until I decide what I want to do. Um, so this I like this however you notice because I'm talking about Halloween and what I would probably do on this one um, that I haven't done before is I would make the background even though I'm going to sell it um, as a PDF I'm going to sell it as a PNG on this whole uh, artboard here and I'm also going to sell it to group the um, things the elements together and sell them as a PNG with a transparent background. I do like the look of, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to change my format, my background. And I think I'm going to go with a gray, a very pale gray. And um, you're not even going to be able to see the elements because they're in gray as well. So let me keep it on the light side. Okay. So when you've got something like that, Okay, and, and I'm going to put my lettering in, in, a, in a bold color, but when you've got something like this, the elements are all um, kind of gray or black. I could add, let me see if I can add a pumpkin, and you know, maybe that's going to help find a pumpkin. No, but I have that shoe, and that's kind of fun. Um, obviously not that big. And then maybe take the little cat out. Now my cat's upset that I'm taking the cat out of the but maybe I put the cat back in. Let's do that. So now I have a little scene there. And it, it still is, um, even though it's um, it it's fills the bottom area and I'm going to put my wording on top, it still is kind of a one color, even though I've got that pop of orange in there and purple. So, um, so this is what I would do. And so I would click on each of these and I would say, because they're picture formats, I would say, picture effects and you can do one of two things. You can either use a shadow, which I've done and you can't really tell it, or um, I like the glow. And you can glow and you can either glow in a Halloween color and when you do that, when you open up the options, it'll tell you, you know, let you choose which color you want to do it. You can do it in a yellow. I'm not sure yellow works for me. That's too neon. Um, you could even do it in a gray so that it pops out. It almost gives it a more of a shadow. And you can decide how much of the, of the glow that you want or not. And you can decide if you want it transparent. So if I maybe go with a darker color and then I make it smaller, then it's going to show up that image. And you can just see it. It's going to show that up a little bit more. So that's one option. And I can do that, I can make that, I think I did that, and I can bump my, keep it the same way. Same thing on my cat, I think my cat's fine, I've got a little glow on my cat. And my tombstone, I want it to be alike. And that gives it a little bit of a pop. Now, I think my shoe is fine, and then I'm going to enter my, um, Put a text box in there and I'm going to go ahead and put some text. Now we know I'm not going to use that plain old thing and I'm going to make it 92. And um, let's see, I'm going to use, I have a Halloween font. I have a few of them. One's called Blood Something. Find it easy. Bloodlust. Okay. So now one thing if you're going to use uh, different lines like this it makes a terrible space between them and that's what happens whenever you have your font larger so what I would do is I would copy this font this whole text box and I would get rid of one of the words and then I would copy it again 
that's just easier than going back and um, adding, you know, extra text boxes and typing it all over again because I'm a little on the lazy side. Okay, and then I go to this one and I get rid of that one and I go to the first one and I get rid of these two. And now what I can do is I can place them closer together and so I can bump up the font. If I bumped up the font without separating them, what would happen is um, I would get big words. Spacing between the words would also be large. And so that may not be something, you know, I'm going to take up the whole page with that. So let's see, I'm going to make this, I think, 120. And this is 120. And then we'll check it. And so I can actually I can actually put the lines closer together. Now I think I did this one. I'm going to keep them all at 100 because I don't want that y'all to, to jump out. There you go. And so I would save this. So, so even though that's cute, I didn't use it. So I can get rid of this. And I kind of like those. Um, let's get rid of the mummy. And let's put that in. Let's see which one I like better. I think this one is too close to the other tombstone. And so I'm going to do that. And then that gives us a little bit more color. I actually like that better than the mummy. So we're going to try that. So when you're doing this, trial and error is, um, is actually, you know, kind of important. Now the other thing you can do on the font, you see my letters are close together. You can go up and you can say loose or very loose. And you can adjust the spacing on the, on the words. And that that kind of helps to space. And so let's see what else we can do. So so then I would save this. I would save the slide as a uh, PNG. I would save it as a PDF. And then I like to group my elements together. And once I've grouped them, I can save these elements. Let me just check. Oh yeah, I didn't get the happy in there. So let me come back and make sure that happy is in there. Otherwise, you always want to check before you actually save it, or you'll get an unpleasant surprise. And then I'm going to save this as a transparent PNG, and if somebody wants to put it on, like, a canvas, um, I don't know why anybody would do that, but if they wanted to, they could just take this print and they could, you know, put it on their canvas. Now, on this one, I'm working with an 8x10. If I wanted to scale this up, and I can do that, I can scale it up easily that's not the problem and so I'm going to make it a 10 by 12 and I'm going to maximize it so I don't lose anything and you notice that even though I did that I've, I've got more space than I did in the first one so I would ungroup these elements and you want to do this before you you can save it as an 8 by 10 and I would even save the PowerPoint as an 8 by 10 and just put happy Halloween y'all 8 by 10 and then um, and then, then once you get done making adjustments, you could also save it. And I need to ungroup this as well. You could also save it as a, a 10 by 12 so that you can always go back and tweak it. Now, my elements, I want to make just, since I made the whole thing just a little bit larger, I want to make all of my elements just a bit larger too. Now, some you can group and do that with. Um, the font, obviously you can't, so I'm going to bump up my font. Now, when I adjusted it, it did adjust my font, but you'll notice that my font still isn't enough. So I'll put 175, and we'll see if that works. 175, 175, and then you want to just line it up. Now, you do have to do this when you change sizes. If you go from an 8 by 10 to a 16 by 20 it'll be in the same proportion and it won't be you know it won't be slightly out of out of sync or it, it won't need as much tweaking okay um, unfortunately a, a 10 by 12 and an 8 by 10 are in different uh, proportions or different ratios there you go and so you do have to tweak it a little bit but as you can see if you save each of the powerpoints um, it, it'll be easy to do. It takes a few seconds to actually line everything up, make everything bigger or smaller. I think I originally, when I originally wrote my blog post about wall art, I said start with the larger size, and, and you should say always save your PowerPoint. Start with the larger size, and then um, save it, and then you know start scaling down. But 
it doesn't make a difference whether you start small and scale up or start large and scale down. It's still the, the same, it still takes the same amount of time, so you're not saving any time. So I would save this. Now, I did do one other one, and this one has a lot of color in it. I tried to put my little cat there, because my cat likes to be in everything, and, and so that would work. And then you could just simply say, um, put something in here, and you could just say, trick or treat. And it could be one line. I can't even see that it's so small. Yeah, I'm going to have to change that. Let's make that with a T because it's going to make more sense, don't you think? And then I would always change my font. Now, I do like the Halloween of Bloodlust. I think it comes in two different versions. E-L. So this is Bloodlust Academy. It's probably part of the same. Uh, and that's at 120. Let's try 150. And I really like that outline on it. And if you put it on a color other than that, so that would be enough. Um, I'm almost tempted to go find a moon, put behind it, but this would be enough um, to sell as wall art. Or you could also just sell, you know, you could get rid of all of this clip art and sell trick or treat, or you could say happy Halloween y'all. You could, you could get rid of all the clip art and do that as well. Okay, so I hope this has given you some ideas and I'm not overworking you. Uh, keep creating. Until next time, um, see you then.